Welcome back to another episode of Life Below the Surface. I'm your host, Josh Blaylock, and today I am joined by arguably the most important person at Georgia Aquarium, and that's because he's everybody's boss. That is none other than Dr. Brian Davis, President and CEO of Georgia Aquarium. Brian, welcome to Life Below the Surface. Thanks a lot. I like being underwater, so I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> can I call you Brian? You absolutely can. Okay, cool, cool. It's cool to be able to call your boss by his first name. <laughs> so, Brian, number one, before we really get into it, what have you thought of, of the podcast so far? Have you heard good, good things about it? I love it. I love the mix of people that are part of it. It sort of gives some insights into all aspects of Georgia Aquarium, which I think is fantastic. And I just love that we're broadening um, and looking at different opportunities to be able to engage people. Um, this podcast is taken off, and obviously there's a fair amount of interest. So, well done, my friend. Well done. Um, it's been a it's been a team effort from the top down. Um, you know, we we really put this together to to get that message out. And I yeah. know getting our message out is something that is extremely important to you. Critically important. Um, uh, the work that we do here, I, I don't think enough people know how much time, energy, and effort goes into what's done at the aquarium each and every day. Um, not just the conservation work on a global scale and educating hundreds of thousands of students, but what it takes to care for these amazing animals is um, it's a lot of work. And what we learned from them has uh, been very valuable with a lot of the papers that have been written and, and the outstanding work that we're a part of. So um, it, it's, it's critical work. and. Listen, I still feel like a five-year-old anytime I'm in this space seeing these animals. So I love it. Pretty incredible. And our setup here is not too bad. The view. <laughs> not too shabby at all. Yeah. The view into Ocean Voyager never, ever, ever gets old. Yeah. So, all right. You brought up many, many good points there that we'll get to a little bit later on. Okay. But the reason why people are here today, the reason why uh, we wanted to bring you in is because we wanted to hear more about you and your story. Okay. about how you came to be president and CEO of Georgia Aquarium. So we're going to take a, a huge step back. Not huge. I didn't mean to say that you're old. <laughs> I'm old or boss. anything. I'm sorry. You, no. you just ah. implied it. Just, I don't know if you mentioned it, but you did. <laughs> and uh, ladies and gentlemen, this will be my last podcast because I have just been let go. Oh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> just kidding. All right. So, Brian, let's kind of, let's, let's take it back a little bit here. Can you tell us how did all of this start for you? And by all of this, I kind of mean your amazing and inspiring career. Uh, well, the journey's been really interesting. Um, I, I think I got into this totally by mistake, just a love for, for a different world, um, just being immersed in a different world. But it started in a really interesting way. I grew up in New Jersey. Um, I'm the youngest of four boys. Um, and there was probably about an eight-year gap between my brother next to me and me. Uh, so my three older brothers would hang out in the surf. We'd go down to the shore every summer, and we'd have a blast. And, um, and if I got in the water with them, I was usually the, the object that got thrown around. So I spent a lot of time hanging out on the shoreline and, and just fascinated by um, horseshoe crabs and shells and all kinds of things I found at the beach. But it also sparked sort of a love for the ocean. Um, and somewhere along the line, I, I, um, I think it was Flipper. That's going to date me right there. <laughs> Flipper, um, uh, I started getting infatuated with dolphins. And, um, and with that, I developed a passion over the years for dolphin in particular, but oceans uh, sort of in the broader scheme. And I decided I wanted to be a marine biologist, and um, my parents wanted me to be an engineer. Um, so I got into engineering school and um, changed my major shortly thereafter to environmental science with a focus in marine biology. And um, right around that time, there was a massive um, wash up of dolphins on the eastern coast, uh, eastern seaboard. And I was sort of committed to making sure that would never happen again. So. Got an internship at New York Aquarium, then I moved here to Atlanta and um, was hired number eight here as director of education for the world's largest aquarium. And um, I couldn't believe that this aquarium was having the education program built two years before the building opened. 
Um, so I felt like education was critically important, so I found a really nice connection here at Georgia Aquarium. And then um, that started sort of a journey of making my way up and um, becoming president and CEO. And sure. I think that's a really cool kind of aspect, Brian, of your journey is the fact that, um, you know, you, and I, I hate to use this, this term, you're not just some business guy. <laughs> You were director of education. You come from an education background. That that that's kind of in your uh, that's in your DNA. That's that's part of your you know part of your MO or any other cliched expression I could possibly you know come up with. This isn't just a business venture. This is a actual educational mission for you. Yes, yes. Uh, the foundation of this is education, right? The only way that we're going to make a difference or change things is through people getting educated about the state of the ocean, the state of these animals, the complexities of ecosystems. It's all in the process of education. Um, I don't lose sight of the business aspect of it. I, I'm very well versed in that space too. I know that we need to continue to have guests connecting with species from all over the world in order to be able to do the research and conservation and education, all the mission-based work that we do. So um, I, I have that balance, but you are absolutely correct. My foundation is an educator. Um, I taught middle school at one point, middle school science, and so I'm automatically granted admission into heaven, having taught middle schoolers, <laughs> that's what I've been told. Um, but if you can teach middle schoolers science and get that connection going, I think you can navigate through some pretty interesting spaces. Middle school science teacher, becomes president and CEO of the <laughs> largest indoor aquarium in the Western Hemisphere. Yes. That's a journey. It right? is. It that, is there's, a journey. there's some distance to travel there, and, and, and you travel it. So obviously, there's, there has to be a, a, a drive and a motivation for you. What, what is, and I, you've, you've kind of hinted at it, but what is that drive and motivation? Like, what makes Dr. Brian Davis come into the aquarium every single day and and keep it going. Like, like I mentioned, I'm still fascinated by it. I, I'm, I am, uh, I continue to consume knowledge about the ocean. There just seems to be a vast amount of information that continue, we continue to learn. And, and, and I just eat it all up because it is, the ocean has us so far beat. I mean, what happens in the level of complexity of what happens in the water compared to what happens on land? It's fascinating to me. So I, I'm driven by understanding and learning even more. Um, but there are a couple of elements that really drive me on a day to day. Um, historically, it's been my children making sure that they had a space and understanding of the ocean and the complexity of ecosystems and what they could do to preserve it. Um, I still step out on the floor and watch families and kids do their, oh, oh my gosh, is that a, what is that? That's a whale shark or that's a manta or that's a horseshoe, um, a seahorse or whatever the case may be. And, and now I have two incredible grandchildren. And so my, my commitment and passion for the ocean and all aquatics, it continues because they, they have to be able to know that they can do their part in preserving it. So yeah. It makes me get up every day and come to work. That's awesome. So speaking of drive and, and motivation, no one's journey is without its roadblocks, yes. without its struggles. Yes. Not to make it too serious of, of, of a note here, but uh, I'm just curious, have you experienced struggles oh. along your career or um, you know, certain, certain roadblocks that, that you've had to, to overcome? Yeah, I think... Yeah, there, there have been a couple, but I'm just going to touch on two. One is most people don't understand how connected we are to the animals that are a part of the aquarium. I mean, we have a staff of nearly 600 people here with an ultimate goal of making sure that these animals have the best lived experience possible. The struggle with that is um, a lot of times people will minimize that as if it's just another animal. No, um, I've experienced the tears. I've watched my staff see, experience the tears. I've seen it all. 
Um, I've seen the immense excitement with a birth and, and the true total devastation with a loss. So um, I think the real struggle there is people do not understand that our staff dedicates their entire life to ensuring these animals um, have a great life. And when it's minimized or you know, viewed as if it's not a big deal, that, that's a real struggle for me. I, I have a hard time with that. The other struggle is um, this has not, not historically been a space for someone that looks like me. Um, I haven't um, been the per first um, black president or CEO of an aquarium in the United States or AZA accredited facility, um, at an AZA accredited facility. Uh, that was only five or six years ago. Wow. So um, th there has been, people don't expect me to have the wealth of knowledge I have about the ocean or um, about these animals or the passion for it. So um, that, that has not always been an easy journey, but I will tell you this, I think the thing that's great about it is um, uh, I hear it time and time again. Kids walk up to me blown away that you are what? And I think there's a, a, a wave of excitement about um, exploring the ocean from audiences that haven't historically looked at it. So I'm excited about that. That's very cool. So what advice, you talk about those little kids that come up to you and ask you, you know, who you are, what you do, and, and, and that are excited to know that you are the president and CEO of Georgia Aquarium. What, what advice do you give those kids? What would you tell the next generation of, not just president and CEOs of, of aquariums, but what would you tell the next generation of scientists and, and kids that are excited about being here? Uh, listen, I would tell them the same thing I would tell anyone. Uh, pursue your passion. Mm. Whatever you're passionate about, pursue it to the fullest. Um, the world likes to put us in ni nice boxes and we kind of look at you know, all of these careers that are, they're gonna make you a certain amount of money, they're gonna do this for you and they, they can fit you into this nice, wonderful box. But you can get to those spaces and you can have money and you can have the cars and you can have the house and be very unhappy with what you're contributing to life. So pursue your passion. Whatever it is that you're passionate about, do it. Do it, do it, do it. And if this happens to be the ocean, do it. If it happens to be animals, do it. If it happens to be research and conservation and education, do it. And if it's a banker or financer, do it. And you can also have those careers at Georgia Aquarium too. So whatever you're passionate about, just, just pursue it to the fullest. Even middle school science teachers? Even middle school science. I, I have to tell you something, to be honest with you, I love yeah. teaching middle school science. I, I loved it. And um, I think, uh, you know, educators, they, they have a tough job. They have a really difficult job, um, especially with how people learn now. You know, they, they're on their computer, and that forces a, a, a teacher to be extraordinarily creative in order to connect. So uh, to the educators out there, job well done. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, extraordinary work. You just touched on something really that hits close to home for me too, and that's that nowadays everyone can get information in less than a second. Yes. You know, home entertainment with, with the you know, cell phone information, things like that. Um, we, as an aquarium, and especially me being in the exhibits team, we have to constantly think about how do we, can, how do we engage an audience that is used to a split second availability of any knowledge, any entertainment, anything like that. And I think one of the cool things about Georgia Aquarium is that we have the ability and resources to do that. Yes. I think um, we have to continually be innovative. How we are going to approach things, we have to do it in an innovative way. And to your point, um, it, it allows us to be positioned as leaders because um, we may have the resources to be able to pursue some of these things and understand how our guests are really connecting. Um, I love going out on, on walking through the aquarium and, and seeing new technology out there that we get to pilot first, see how guests are going to respond to it, and then ramp it up. 
but more importantly, sharing that information with other aquariums and uh, zoos, so uh, museums for that matter. So it's exciting. I, I think we're in a great position. I, I, I can't possibly begin to complain. This is a, this is a, um, this is a very unique situation. I think we have, um, uh, but we also have a duty to make sure that we fully utilize these resources and help others along the way. What goals and hopes do you have for the future of this facility? I mean, uh, honestly, Brian, since you've taken over, there's been a big push, and you can you can see it a big push towards. Uh, accessibility, diversity, inclusion, and also a ton of research projects and in, in getting involved in that worldwide. Georgia Aquarium is not just, we might be Atlanta based, but our footprint extends much, much further than the, than, than the perimeter of Atlanta. Yes. Um, you know, we, we are reaching out there and, and being able to affect things around the world. So what, what goals, what, where, where do you see that taking us within the next couple of years? Uh, I, I, I see it taking us to a place where we're pushing a level of innovation with habitat design, uh, a level of creativity that's been extraordinarily unique. I think it has us looking at things from um, even more so from a varied experiences that our, our animals get to participate with and our, and our guests get to participate in. Um, I think our mission-based programs are going to continue to grow. Um, we, we are not just a facility that sees approximately three million people a year. We, we're going to make sure that our, um, for lack of a better term, tentacles are, are spread out having an impact throughout the world. Um, understanding some of these incredibly unique and amazing species, but how their lived world is changing. I mean, there's a lot of pressure going on in the natural environment. Um, what do we do? We're playing a role as leaders and policy makers and, and drivers in making sure uh, that the natural environment can continue to sustain. If we're gonna do conservation and preservation, can the natural environment really handle a growth in some of these areas? And right now, it can be quite challenging. Two weeks ago, I got an opportunity to do something. It was absolutely transformative for me. I got an opportunity, um, I, I do scuba dive, and I got an opportunity to go down to the Florida Reef Track, um, mm -hmm. down in the Keys, and, and work with a program there and um, replant some corals in a coral, um, in an area where coral had obviously been devastated. And, you know, to be able to get on, you know, you're 20, 30 feet underwater, and you're taking these coral from an area where they're growing in one section, you're planting them in a different area. Um, I'm gonna try my best not to get emotional in this part. This area had obviously been pretty devastated um, by the impact of changing climate and some of the diseases that um, the corals have been exposed to. The fish are waiting. The fish are underwater waiting for more cover. They're waiting for the coral to come back. Um, I have to tell that story a million times here about the impact of what's going on every day and how it's impacting the ocean. I mean, when you see these fish trying to find little crevices anywhere because the coral that's been their historic cover has been devastated, all right, we got to do something. Yeah. We have to do something. So it's things like that, that those messages, we have to get them out at Georgia Aquarium. And we have to make sure that we get people to understand we can all do our part. It's amazing. Amazing. I've been lucky enough as well to, I got scuba certified down at that tractive reef and continuing to dive down there in that South Florida area uh, is, uh, has been one of the, some of the highlights of my life and I've noticed a big change uh, myself. Yeah. And that is definitely a motivator. I mean, it, it, this stuff is happening. Yes. It's, it is happening. We need to definitely, <laughs> we need to realize that, get our heads out of the sand and, and do something about it. And I think that's one of the cool things 
not only to have a president and CEO that wants to do something about it, but we have this facility that is actually doing something yes. about it. Yes, yes. Um, so yeah, I really look forward to seeing what we can do and continue to do in the future. And it's, uh, it's my job, it's everyone else's job as well to get that, that message out because yes. a lot of folks just aren't aware of, of how involved we actually are. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think things like this are a great way to get, uh, to get that message out there. So, all right, well, let's come right back here to the aquarium. Let's talk about if people see Dr. Brian Davis walking around the aquarium, just enjoying his day. Where are you going? What's your favorite exhibit? What's your species? <laughs> where, where are they going to find you? You know what? They will find me at every one of the exhibits here. I, How I did mean, I know that was no, going to no, be your answer? And I'm not. <laughs> I, I, no, no. I'm being so honest mm. because any given day I could be somewhere. I mean, the electric eel exhibit upstairs fascinates me. Um, the gators. I love the gators. Uh, do I enjoy coming here and looking at this massive 6.3 million gallon entire ecosystem that we have here? Of course, who wouldn't? Dolphins are here though, so I could be sitting in front of the dolphin window and, and, and belugas watching Shyla grow and continue. So, and uh, Garibaldi fish uh, yeah. or, or otters. I, I could be anywhere in this place and so, um, yeah, there's not just one area. You're liable to see me anywhere and, um, and taking it all in and, and because I still have a passion for it all. That's like awesome. I told you, I, I, I'm looking at this stingray right now. And if you've noticed, every time the whale sharks have come by, I'm, I'm looking over here in the window. I'm, I'm still a kid at heart when it comes to, to this, these um, amazing animals and, and still fascinated. That's awesome. So what has been up until today, and I know, you know this podcast is probably right at the top of this list, but what has been <laughs> your favorite moment or moments from your career here at the aquarium Ooh, so far? Wow. Yeah, we might. Uh, My favorite moment or moments. Might be moments. a tough one. Wow. Okay. Uh, I can give you maybe one or two. Um, my favorite moment. One of them is um, opening year. We opened right before, it's 2005. We opened right before Thanksgiving. And um, it was so hectic and so busy, um, but I got an opportunity to show my kids the aquarium really in its full um, capacity. And it was so busy, we were working on Thanksgiving Day uh, they rolled a little red wagon with uh, the turkey and the ham and everything, and we sat in one of the classrooms, had Thanksgiving dinner, and enjoyed the aquarium. That was a memory that's sort of etched in my head forever. But I can tell you um, one of the days that was the most inspirational for me is um, we walked um, Coretta Scott King through the aquarium one evening and got the opportunity to have that experience with her. And um, that, that was legendary for me, to be able to walk through the aquarium. Um, and, and I think by that time she, she had been in a wheelchair and, and we were walking her through and she was just very much connecting with different parts of the aquarium. And when you think about um, my role now, and what that family fought to do in this country, that, that's one of the tops. One, one of the tops on my list. That's amazing. Of many. That's absolutely amazing. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's, that's the cool part about being, able to, about being able to talk to you today, is that there's, there's uh, over half the things you've said are things that I was, I, I didn't even know. And I work here. It's so cool to get that message. Like that's, that's extremely powerful. And we have to, we have to start kind of wrapping it up a little bit, but let's say you're, you're, you're walking down there and you have an average guest that just comes up to you asking you for, for directions or ask you some question. And then they start kind of talking to you a little bit more. What is one of the biggest messages? What's one of the biggest takeaways 
that you love our guests, not only to visit the aquarium, but also our, our podcast listeners here, what's one of the biggest takeaways that, that you want them to, to have after a visit or after a Georgia Aquarium experience? Um, really, I want them to, to walk away connected. Like, what happens in the water is mind-blowing and fascinating. And, um, so I want them to really get connected to what's happening there. Um, but I also um, want them to get a sense um, that they can come here, have an amazing time with their family, and walk out of here energized to make sure that the ocean is functioning in the way that it should be functioning. Um, and if we do right by the ocean and the water, it will definitely do right by us. Um, but come, have a great time, enjoy, get connected. We want you to get to connected to these animals so you take an active role in preserving uh, this amazing ecosystem. Yeah, whale shark just went by, so <laughs> I, of course I'm overlooking. Um, but if, if we can connect you through the animals, because people have a natural passion for animals. I mean, you see what people do with their, their pets and the whole range of animals that are, um, part, that are part of our lives. And, and once you make that connection, you want to do something about it. And that's what we want. That's I want awesome. them to walk away saying, I'm going to do something to make things better. That's awesome. Well, Brian, your journey is amazing. It's inspiring just to talk to you. You can hear the passion come through. And I swear I'm not just saying that because I'm due for a promotion. <laughs> but I'm <just> because... <laughs> Sorry, you got to shoot your shot sometimes, guys. Uh, no, I'm kidding. In, in, in all seriousness, you have had an incredible journey. Uh, we are lucky to have you here because that passion is contagious. And you can see that passion. Just uh, There is a trickle-down effect. And uh, I've been here for six years. I'm noticing that passion just continue to surge. And that's extremely important because the older we get, you know, you kind of see a lag in that. But to actually see a surge in that, to see us move forward and continue to spread out and do these incredible things. It, it all comes down to uh, a, a leader that's not behind pushing, but is in front bringing along. Yeah. So I, I, I just want, if you don't mind, I want to thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I, 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 you, it's, it's amazing when you have a team um, that you work, and I'm not going to say, you, you all don't work for me. We work together, and I definitely work for you all to make sure you have what you need um, because the creativity and the energy and the innovation really comes from the staff. My job is to make sure you have the resources to do it. Um, but you all found another avenue to be able to explore these conversations. And, and I wanna just tell you, thank you. Uh, thank the team for finding uh, a, another avenue and, and making sure that this message gets out there. Um, we got a lot of work to do. It can feel overwhelming some days, um, but it's good work. It's really, really good work. And, and just thanks. Thanks for use, utilizing another avenue to get this, um, this message out there. So thank you for the creativity. Awesome, really appreciate that. And guys, I think I might've just gotten that promotion. So, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Brian, thank you so much for joining us today, sir. All right, it's been you. a pleasure. Guys, on our next episode, I'll be joined by a group of women who all have a unique and powerful story to share. Be sure to tune in. Until next time, this is Josh, yours in conservation, signing off. <laughs> <laughs>